And the weather in September? Could be 90, could be like this, you know? I, I don't know if you're familiar with Chicago weather. What is there here that's like Lincoln himself hiding in plain sight that could make a singular experience? Yeah. Oh, look at that bouncy, bouncy. No one can complain about the floor here. Now, once again, seeing this, and you see all the possibilities, is very exciting to me and very disturbing to me. This asks so many questions about uh, dance. Look at this huge, huge place. How do you pull an audience this size for a piece about Lincoln? Is Lincoln about slavery? And who wants to talk about slavery? No matter how lyrical the terms, who really wants to talk about it? And who's going to come out, have their picnic on the lawn, and see a piece about it? Or is it under the disguise of being a pop show? Is it going to be fun? And how do you send out signals beforehand that's going to be fun? So you get people, working class people, people who um, would come to a park with their kids to have a barbecue, to get them to come and watch a work like that. These are all questions in this very space. What will the vocabulary be? What will the music be? How do I use the abstraction of arms and legs? Good, good, good. The idea is all right, but I think the movement should be, rather than this being this, if it was something like, I don't even know what it is, if it was something like that, you know, instead if it was another part rather than just the shoulder. How can it be fresh? And how do I use text? Viewed from the genuine abolition ground, Mr. Lincoln seemed tardy, cold, dull, and indifferent. But measuring once again, group, viewed from what? The the genuine abolition ground, Mr. Lincoln seemed tardy, cold, Slow down. dull. Mr. Lincoln seems tardy, cold, cold, dull, and indifferent. But measuring. You see what I look for there? Mm -hmm. Those are strong, descriptive words, mm -hmm. right? You know that you don't usually attach to him. No. So read them again. Viewed from the genuine abolition ground. Now, how can I talk about such a strong, ambiguous figure in a way that will talk to us? Let's remember that it was a man from this state who first carried the banner of the Republican Party to the White House, as Lincoln said to a nation far more divided than ours. We are not enemies, but friends. Though passion may have strained our bonds of affection. What does it mean, this 200th anniversary, this new country? And is this man a story that we tell children? Or is he more complicated than that? I know that there have been voices in the African American community that say he was not the great emancipator, he was an ultimate politician. But I've always been very much in the camp that this was a good man. Now, a good man, question mark, or a good man, exclamation? Maybe this is where you find me today. This is a stovepipe hat. Yeah. And it's um, one of three known today. You can see the two wear marks there. Mm -hmm. And underneath, there's one more for the thumb, sort of tipping his hat hundreds, dozens of times. These are Lincoln's reading glasses, the one he had on at Ford's Theater the night he died. He had um, a few pairs, as most people do in the course of their life. Why am I so shaken at this moment? All day, there have been two entities doing war. There is a small boy, born in 1952, to a family of potato pickers. I hear my mother's prayers. I hear so much about liberation. The echoes are everywhere. When I was a five-year-old boy, he was the only white man I was allowed to love unconditionally. And then there's a man who's allowed more alienation and cynicism to creep into his soul than he would like to admit. A man who has very few heroes. 
Mr. Lincoln himself and the way that he will coin a phrase, sometimes the modern ironist in me has a step back. This cannot be so true. The way the man speaks, directly from his heart. Can he really be so unsullied? Did he really exist on this plane? My dear friends, I'm going to say goodbye to you now rather than my dear friends. I am saying goodbye to you right now. He was not supposed to win, and everyone thought it would be a triumphal speech. My friends, no one not in my situation can appreciate my feelings of sadness at this party. Here I've lived a quarter of a century and have passed from a young man to an old man. Here my children have been born and one is buried. I now leave not knowing when or whether ever I may return with a task before me greater than that which rested upon Washington. How much distance will there be between me and the subject matter? Number one, and go, and we go, and one. Where is Lincoln in this room? Any good work of art must talk about us. The good man. What does he have to say to us today? Are we good people? Am I a good man?